All right, um, so we're going to continue with uh, videos for Math 2580, Calc 4. These are uh, our week three installments. I want to do a few more examples with chain rule, and then we're going to move on to some of the sort of consequences of the chain rule, including uh, implicit differentiation, uh, tangent planes um, for, for level surfaces. Uh, we're going to look at some of these. Um, but first, let's do some examples, make sure we know how chain rule works, and we'll go from there. Okay, um, so one of the ways that I think might be helpful to think about chain rule and how things fit together is, is remember we have, we have these differentials, all right? So, so let's say you have Z equals F of X, Y. Well, then we know that dz should be the x derivative times dx plus the y derivative times dy, All right? Okay. Now, suppose you want to take this differential and, and turn this into chain rule. Um, Well, here's sort of a sneaky thing you can do. So we're going to work in, in this scenario now where, you know, x, x sort of is now, say, x of t, y. I know this is, this is a bad use of notation, but I'm going to cheat and use it anyway. So, so we're going to say that x and y depend on t. Um, so how do I turn this differential into a chain rule? Ah, that's easy enough. Divide by t. Okay, and boom, you have chain rule, right? Uh, again, if it was a function of three variables, if say this w equals f of x, y, z, let's say, uh, well then that's fine, this is a dw, there's another term over here with an f sub z uh, times dz, and again, just divide through by dt, and you're done, right? Piece of cake. Uh, what, about, uh, what about if you're working with some of the, uh, you know, the other cases like, uh, okay, so, we're not going to do this. We're going to do maybe, you know, x now depends on, let's say, u and v. y depends on u and v, right? And, and I want to calculate my partial derivatives of z with respect to, to x and y. What does that look like? Well, pretty much the same thing, right? It's just that now z kind of, since x and y both depend on u and v, and z is defined as a function of x and y, through function composition, z becomes a function of u and v, right? So instead of being a function of just one variable t, it depends on two things, so derivatives are now partial derivatives, and it's going to be the same damn story. Right? The only thing that changes is these derivatives are now the derivative of x with respect to u and the derivative of y with respect to u. And if I wanted, if I wanted to do dz dv, still that. The only thing that changes is this is now dx dv. That's still the derivative with respect to y, f derivative with respect to y, and this becomes dy dv, right? That's the only thing that changes. Make that u look more like a u. There we go. Okay. Um, so, so all the various instances of chain rule, they tend to follow the same pattern, right? Uh, I mean, you can, you can probably come up with some other examples, um, you know, where you kind of do things in other orders than are, are normal. Um, I'm thinking of maybe something like, uh, oh, we could do something like this, right? Uh, maybe t is like f of x, y, z. And, um, and I have maybe something like, uh, you know, um, r is equal to, I don't know, I need some more letters here, maybe like S, S of T, right? So, 
So this is going to be, you know, S is going to be like, say, um, oh, yeah, I shouldn't use X again. Let me erase that. One of the troubles with Calc 4 is that sometimes you run out of letters. Um, so let's say this is, you know, U of T, V of T. And, and I want to calculate, you know, um, I guess, what could I do? Maybe like D, D, R, D, X. Can I do that? Um, yeah, I can probably do that, right? Um, but these, these ones, I think they, they probably don't come up that often. And in fact, um, what, what this ends up looking like, I can, I can show you what it looks like. These, if you're dealing with ex explicit functions, you will find that once you write everything out, you don't really need to think carefully about these as chain rule problems. Um, and actually, if you think about sort of factoring out a scalar, I guess you could think of this as, as like S prime of T um, times dt dx. And then a similar thing for the y derivative, right? You just replace all the dx's with dy's. Um, but usually you don't really bother with formulas for this sort of chain rule like this because um, if you know what these functions u and v are, like if this is say sine t and cos t, something like that, um, this just becomes sort of ordinary chain rule um, like you learned in calc 1. The only difference being that you know, you have some expression involving x, y, and z inside the function, and so when you, when you apply the chain rule to the inside part, you're doing a partial derivative rather than a regular derivative. Um, so, so most of these kind of happen naturally, and you don't need to worry about rules for them. Um, but let's do a couple, a couple of quick examples just to get the hang of things, and then we'll move on um, to some other things. So let's say... I do something like this. So let's say z equals um, uh, x squared sine x, y squared, where x equals t cubed, y is equal to 4t. Okay. So if I wanted to calculate dz dt, So let's think of this as, um, well, let's think of it this way. It's dz dx dx dt dz dy dy dt. Uh, I decided to use this sort of partial derivative of z notation because, uh, well, to use this notation, first I'd have to give this thing a name. I guess I'd have to tell you, oh, hey, by the way, this is f of x, y. Um, and then I could use that notation. Uh, if you want to skip that step, you've always got this as, a, as an alternative notation in your back pocket. Okay, so let's see. What are these derivatives? Um, well, we've got to do product rule for the x derivative, right? Because we've got x squared out front, and there's also an x in there. So 2x sine x, y squared plus x squared. So derivative of the outside, so we do derivative of sine, we get cos xy squared. And then we got to multiply by the derivative of xy squared, so the, the inside, but it's the, we're doing the partial with respect to x. So the partial with respect to x of xy squared, um, derivative of x is just 1, leaves me with y squared. Okay, so let's put it on the outside. Uh, and now I have to multiply by dx dt, which is 3t squared. And now I'm going to do dz dy. That one's a little bit more straightforward, right? Because the x squared is a constant as far as the y derivative is concerned. So now I do the derivative of sine. I get cosine. And now we multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of y squared is 2y, so I get 2xy. And finally, dy dt multiplied by 4, okay? And you've got it. All right, not so bad. We'll do one more example with, uh, with two variables. 
and then we'll, uh, you know, actually, no, we're at 10 minutes. Let's leave it here. I'm going to come back. We'll do a separate video for, uh, for an example that fits, um, fits this pattern, okay? And actually, we'll do it two different ways. Um, why not? Just for fun. <laughs>